The hilarious and completely backward journey of Igbo marriage and dowry, episode four. Written and produced by Cyprian Josson. Welcome back, Nollywood lovers. I'm your host, Olana Ifeani Chukwu. After the last episode's shocking twist, Adeazi found out that Chinadu, the man she's been fighting so hard for, has secretly been in love with her best friend, Kioma. What will Adeazi do? Will she confront him? Will she stand by her friend? Or is there an even bigger twist around the corner? Let's find out in episode four, The Revelation and the Reckoning. Adeazi sat alone in her room, the weight of the revelation crashing over her like a storm. The silence was unbearable, her thoughts too loud, too fast. She had given everything for Chinedu, her time, her energy, her love. And now it all felt like a lie. How long had he been pretending? How long had she been the fool? Suddenly there was a knock at the door. Adeaze wiped away her tears and opened it to find Chinedu standing there looking uneasy. He stepped inside before she could say anything, clearly knowing something was wrong. Chinedu. Adeaze, we need to talk. Adeaze crossed her arms, her face hardening. Yes, we do. Why don't you start by telling me the truth? Chinedu frowned, confused. The truth about what? Adeaze's voice shook with anger. About Kioma. You're in love with her, aren't you? Chinedu's face paled. He hadn't expected this. Adeaze, it's not what you think. Adeaze, cutting him off. It's exactly what I think. You've been leading me on, making me jump through hoops for your family, all the while harboring feelings for my best friend. Do you have any idea how humiliating this is? Chinedu sighed, running a hand through his hair. I never wanted to hurt you, Adeze. I thought, I thought I could love you the way you deserve. But yes, I have feelings for Kioma. I've had them for a long time. Adeze's heart shattered all over again. Hearing it confirmed out loud was worse than she could have imagined. So, everything we've been through. It was all a lie? Chinedu. No, it wasn't a lie. I care about you. I do, but... He hesitated, struggling to find the right words. But my heart, it's with her. Adeze's eyes filled with tears, but she refused to let them fall. She wouldn't break down in front of him. So why didn't you tell me? Why drag me through all of this, making me fight for your family's approval when you knew you didn't even want to be with me? Chinadu's voice was barely a whisper. I thought I could make it work. I didn't want to hurt you. But the truth is, I wasn't brave enough to admit how I really felt. Adeaze shook her head, the betrayal cutting deep. And now? What do you expect me to do? Just step aside while you and Kioma ride off into the sunset? Chinedu reached out, but Adeaze stepped back, avoiding his touch. I'm sorry, Adeaze. I really am. Later that day, Adeaze met Kioma at a cafe, her emotions still raw. Kioma had called, begging to explain herself, though Adeaze wasn't sure what there was to explain. The pain was too fresh, too overwhelming. Kioma sat across from her, fidgeting nervously with her hands. Adeaze, please let me speak. Adeaze nodded, her arms crossed, her face unreadable. Kioma. I didn't plan for any of this to happen. I never encouraged Chinadu. In fact, I told him over and over that you were the one for him. I didn't want to hurt you. You're my best friend. Adeza's voice was cold. Some best friend you are. You knew how I felt about him. You knew everything I was going through and you said nothing. Kioma, pleading. I didn't want to hurt you. I thought if I stayed quiet, if I kept my distance, he'd move on. I never wanted to come between you two. Adeze's anger flared. But you didn't stop him, did you? You let him keep thinking about you, keep believing that he could have you. You should have told me the moment he confessed. Kioma's eyes filled with tears. I'm so sorry, Adeze. I never wanted to hurt you like this. The two friends sat in silence, the weight of the situation hanging between them like a wall they couldn't cross. 
Days passed and Adaeze was a shadow of herself. She avoided Chinadu, ignoring his calls and messages. She couldn't bear to face him or Kioma. She needed time to think, to heal. Then, one evening, Chinadu's mother came to visit Adaeze unexpectedly. She entered without waiting for an invitation, her presence filling the small room. Chinadu's mother, Adaeze, I need to speak with you. Instead, there was something almost kind in her eyes. Chinadu's mother, I've heard about what's happened between you, Chinadu, and Kioma. Adaeze nodded, her throat tight. Chinadu's mother, sighing. I've been hard on you, Adeyezi. I pushed you because I wanted the best for my son. I thought you were strong enough to handle it. And you are. But I realize now that I was pushing you towards something that wasn't meant to be. Adeyezi blinked, surprised by the woman's words. Chinadu's mother. I've seen how hard you've worked to meet our demands, how much you've sacrificed. But Chinadu... He's not the man for you. I see that now. He's made his choice, and it's a foolish one. But you, Adaeze, you deserve someone who will love you the way you deserve to be loved. Adaeze stared at her in disbelief. Was this the same woman who had given her such a hard time? Who had demanded impossible things from her? Chinedu's mother. You're a good woman, Adaeze. You have a bright future ahead of you. Don't let Chinedu's foolishness take that from you. Adaeze felt tears prick at the corners of her eyes. For the first time in weeks, she felt a sense of relief, like a weight had been lifted off her chest. Maybe Chinedu wasn't her future, but she was still standing. She would be okay. Whoa, what a turn of events. It looks like Adaeze may have lost Chinedu, but she's gained something even more valuable. Self-respect and a path forward. And did Chinadu's mother actually admit she was wrong? What will happen next for our heroine? Find out in the next episode of the hilarious and completely backward journey of Igbo marriage and dowry. Stay tuned.